Have you ever thought about starting your own podcast? When I was trying to get this podcast off the ground, I had a lot of questions. How do I record an episode? How do I get my show into all the apps people like to listen? How do I make money from my podcast? Well, the answer to every one of these questions is really simple. Anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. Best of all, it's 100% free and ridiculously easy to use. And now, Anchor can match you with great sponsors who want to advertise on your podcast. That means you can get paid to podcast right away. In fact, that's what I'm doing right now by reading this ad. When I started using anchor to do my podcast, it was so extremely easy that I haven't even bothered to look for another app to use. I love this app. It's the only one I deal with, the only one I even recommend, period. I recommend you get on there ASAP. If you want to start a podcast, this is definitely the place to go. It's easy. You can drive around and record. You can sit in your basement and record. You can uh, you can do it anywhere. It's fantastic. So if you've always wanted to start a podcast, make money doing it, go to anchor.fm slash start, anchor.fm slash start to join me and the diverse community of podcasters already using Anchor. That's anchor.fm slash start. I can't wait to hear your podcast. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's Adam Rich from the Really Rich Podcast. And listen, I wanted to talk to you today about why you should never, ever give up. And anything that you care about, anything that you like, anything that you believe is worth worth any, any importance to you at all, don't give up. Listen, if, you have, if you're going through a funk, if you're going through a bad time or you're going through a lot of loss or failure... That does not mean that it's a complete that it's over that it's a complete wrap. Now, if you're, you know, I mean, I, I think big is the most importantly when it comes to whether or not you should give up at anything is based on you need to be more important than anything self aware. Like for instance, if you're 52 years old and you're about a five foot six white dude, there's a good chance you're not going to play in the NFL. You know, you know what I mean. And I don't even, in, in, like, you're, you're not going to be on the on an NBA roster anytime. So if that, if you're at 52 years old and you're a short guy, then you're not, you, you just need to know what the fuck you're working with is basically, I guess, the easiest way to put it. But like, if you are like, if you just love painting or you love drawing, it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how behind you are. It doesn't matter None of that matters. If you fucking love doing this, then you should be out there doing it all the time. You should be doing as much as you can. And if anybody comes up to you and tells you you suck, tell that person to go fuck themselves. That ain't for you. Like, not everyone needs to love what you're doing. It's not... Everyone is different. Everyone is wired a little different. Everyone's built differently. Everyone has different interests, different skills, different talents that they, they, they run with. It's like... If you really, really love doing something and you're not, even if you do it for free, even if it's not making you any money, you just genuinely, it's a hobby of yours. You just love it. You always have. Then I don't give a fuck what anybody says about it. It doesn't matter how they feel about you doing that. Keep doing that. And listen, you know how many people told Jimi Hendrix he sucked before he became Jimi Hendrix? Or LeBron. You know how many times LeBron has failed miserably? before he became LeBron? Like, you think he was born out of the womb that damn good at basketball? Like, no, everybody loses. Everybody has failure. Everyone gets told they suck at some point. And to be honest with you, we all do suck at some point. You might not anymore. You might be phenomenal. You might be the best ever. But at one point, you were terrible. Nobody is, like, nobody starts out being the greatest of all time. Nobody starts out as the goat. I've said this a million times, and yet people, they believe that if if some internet troll, if if NastySack86 goes on your Instagram or Twitter and says that you're fucking terrible and you should give up, why are you listening to that person? Who the, what authority do they have? 
It's like if you if you're trying to get into a, a certain business, if you're trying to go work at a certain company, and the guy who's doing all the hiring says you suck and there's no chance. All right, then maybe you might want to look at another company. <laughs> you know, but if if you're doing something that you genuinely just like makes you happy and you like doing it, but all your friends and family say that you're not good and say that you should give up and you should stop trying, the only people that encourage you to give up are other people that have given up. That's it. Nobody, like, you don't see me sitting here fucking telling you to give up. I don't give a shit what it is that you're trying to do. I don't care if you are, if your passion in life is to be the greatest yo-yo master of all time. You still got time, dude. You got plenty of time. Because yo-yo is one of them damn things that you don't have to quit because you hit hit 60 years old. You can play with a damn yo-yo until you're 97. Did you know that? You're really good. And you still have time to be the greatest. If you're, if you just love being in school and reading and studying and, and it doesn't, whatever topic, whatever class, it doesn't matter. If that's your thing, you don't have to stop going to school. Nobody ever says that you have to stop going to school. You may have heard me in another, uh, you know, say at another time about how messed up I think the school system is now, which I do agree, which I do believe. But that, but if you're built where you like school and you like going to these classes and you like getting the like an education or a degree in any one field, I don't think you should give that up. I just think that there's cheaper ways to afford doing it, like Google. Like there's you can if there's anything that you can think, of, pick anything in the entire world and type that shit in on Google. I guarantee you're going to get an answer. Now, is it the greatest, most in-depth answer? I'm sure with enough digging, you could find that. But the point is, if you go to a school, if you go to a university, you get three months of an education with any one class, you know, for each semester, sometimes less, depending on the semester. But you're only going to get so many months worth of talk, and then it's over. The, the internet, you can look at that shit anytime you want and go as deep as you want to into the history into what is currently being talked about, into what kind of current science is being done or what's known. Like, it doesn't stop. And let's be honest, if you go to college and you buy and you take, go into a class, those books could be several years old. The, the information is going so quickly now that if you have a book that's two to three years old, you're outdated. You're outdated on that. So I just don't think it's just not a good system. And you're paying such a ridiculous amount of money to go to school to learn what you can easily learn from Google. Like I taught myself everything I know about podcasting and, and how to what equipment to buy and, and how to start and, you know, how to do ads and how to advertise and all this shit. Right. And I'm not saying I'm the best at it. By, by far, I'm not. But I, I've everything that I've learned. I definitely taught myself. Nobody, I mean, the internet taught me, I guess, if you want to put it on somebody else, but <laughs> nobody, no fuck it. I don't know any, there was no personal podcasters that I had talked to beforehand. And I said, well, what did you do? What did you use? How did you start? What did you say? I didn't do none of that. I just purely went on Google and typed it and YouTube. And I literally self-taught my, well, not self-taught, I guess, however you want to look at it, but nobody fucking taught me. No, no human person physically gave me any information ever not once and you can do that with anything man if you want to if you want to open up a fucking flower shop tomorrow but you know nothing about flowers you can certainly do that if you spend the next 10 to 12 hours on on the internet researching everything you need to know about flowers and and flower shops it to at least give you a basics you know it might not give you the master class in 12 hours but you got to keep studying, dude. You can find anything. If all of a sudden you want to know, well, what colors do roses come in naturally? Uh, how big do carnations grow? Um, wh- what does a tulip look like? Like, I don't know any of these things, right? But the internet fucking does. And if you want to do this tomorrow, you can. You just have to allot yourself the time. And that's really what it boils down to. The most expensive thing in the entire universe for yourself is your time. Because you can't ever get it back. You can't make trades for it. You can't say, hey, I'll offer you this if you can give me back an extra 10 minutes to life. It doesn't happen. It's the most valuable thing you have in the world. And all you have to do, if you want to know anything, 
is spend your time. You don't need to spend your time and your money because that's what universities are for. Universities cost you your time and a shitload of money. That's the only gripe I have about universities. But if you love school and you love going and sitting in the classroom and meeting 20, 30 other people and asking the teacher questions and and that whole one-on-one interface and all that stuff, then do that, dude. nobody's, Nobody's saying you shouldn't. But you have to decide what you want and what you like and what it means a lot to you and put forth the time and effort to making it happen. But if, if, if you talk to 30 people and all 30 of them are like, listen, you suck, you're not any good. Instead of giving up, that should be motivation for you to figure out how can I be better. Type it in on the internet. Say, whatever it is that, you, that people are saying you suck at, type in how, how to be great at and then that. How to be great at podcasting. How to be great at driving a car. How to be great at weaving a quilt. How to be great at opening a flower shop. Anything, dude. Anything on earth that you want to be good at, type it in on Google and hit search or enter. I'm telling you, man, there's nothing off limits. If you want to know how to do a kickflip on a skateboard, type that shit in. Do it on YouTube. They'll give you a video. Me, I've always been terrible when it comes to like, like I can read. I hate, I always hate saying that I'm bad at reading. I'm not bad at reading. I just don't like it because my mind wanders constantly. If I can't visually see what's happening, then I don't, it, it's like my mind is trying to picture it, but my, my eyes keep reading the words. And the next thing I know, I'm two or three paragraphs down and I'm still thinking about that first sentence. And I have no idea what the fuck I just read. That's just how my mind operates. I'm much more of a visual guy. I can learn 10 times faster and easier if I'm watching a video, if I'm watching somebody do it, if it's, if it's like a hands-on, if I'm visually seeing the steps taken. That's so much easier for me. But that's not everybody. Some people are way better at reading the words. So you just need to find out what is good for you, how you work best, you know, what, your, what you think your skill set is, what what you're interested in, man. Like, and here's the biggest thing. Everyone that I know is, is so worried about the judgment from others. If you like building forts out of cardboard boxes and you're 39 years old, if I come along and I say, Hey dude, like grow up, man, that's, that's pretty fucking weird. You should look at me and go, the fuck is it any of your business? That's it, that's the point. It doesn't matter who likes it. It doesn't matter if your mom and dad are saying, well, son, I don't believe you should be focusing on this stuff. Listen, daughter, I think that you should be really moving in this other direction. That's what your parents want. That's what, they, that's what their interests are. And listen, most parents have your best interests at heart, but most parents don't know enough. This whole internet thing has changed everything. It has literally made... Any kind of hopes and dreams or goals that you have, an opportunity now. It's now possible. In the past, I was told constantly from the time I was seven to the, till I was 34 years old that I should focus on getting a good job, saving my money, and then retiring one day and then living off that money. And that was a great idea back in the 60s and 70s and 80s possibly 90s. But the internet has changed everything. The internet has made it to where it's easily possible to fund your to do your own thing, to fund your to basically open up a business and fund your life if you work hard enough and you learn enough and you're good enough. But this is why I think it's extraordinarily important to focus on what you like and are good at. Because if you're not good at something but you like it, the people that are good at it are going to eat you alive in that field. It doesn't, just because you like something a lot doesn't mean that it's going to happen, that you're going to be the best in the field or you're going to make a lot of money or you're going to make a great living. Now, if you can get over the idea of, of the money being the biggest important factor, if you can decide for your own life that being happy is, is infinitely more important to you than being, than having money or than having a, a millions or, you know, setting a standard, because listen, you can make money. You, you can make a living. You can live in a house and have a car and keep food on your plate doing anything that you like doing if you do it 
enough if you work hard enough at it and you and you market yourself at advertisement you put stuff on facebook social media all over try to get people interested in it, you can have a decent living doing any selling smurfs selling smurf memorabilia you can do that and there's a big enough market for it however you have to let go of this idea of being richer and richer and richer this is why i started the podcast and called it really rich because i'm trying to teach people what being really rich in life means not money not financial not having ferraris and yachts and fucking a thousand bottles of champagne it's it's knowing what is what real value in life is being happy is real value having a family that you care about or friends or family having things in your life in your immediate life that you genuinely care about and you are grateful for that you have appreciation for there's so many things that there's so many times that people have millions of dollars and they are just depressed as shit and it's because they focused on the money and not on what actually brings joy to that person's life Listen, if you if you get big into sales, listen, I when I was younger, all I did was sales. That's all my, every job that I had up until my most recent one was all sales. Everything I I ever did was in sales. And I liked sales. I really really liked sales a lot. But then as I got older, I realized, man, the more you sell, the more opportunities come up for somebody to ask for something and then you got to lie to them. And you have to, and you have to basically like at my job that at my current job, the, the plastics company, if you're in sales, you have to tell a lot of, even when you don't have shit ready for the customer, you have to call the customer and say, oh yeah, yeah, we're running that right now. It looks like it's going to be great. It's going to be done on time. And in reality, you haven't even started the project and you have to lie to these people. And then they call you back a week later and they're like, where is my shit? You said it was going to be here and it's not. And then you have to come up with some new lie about what took so long. Maybe it was done. Maybe something happened in shipping. Maybe the part messed up. Maybe uh, maybe the, the something happened in the inventory. Who knows? You have to make up shit and lie to these people. My mom always told me when I was younger, she goes, you'd make a great lawyer. You'd make a great lawyer. And I agree with her. I probably would because of my the my due diligence that I put in my study work my ability to read and understand people to to be able to tell if somebody's lying to my fucking face now listen there's a lot of times people lie to my face and I don't acknowledge it I don't look at them and call them out on it I let them continue thinking that they're getting away with it I like doing that because I think in the long run it hurts them even more you know and and listen I'm not in the business to try to hurt people I'm in the business to try to help people but if you're gonna lie to my fucking face and think that you're out outsmarting me and getting getting one over on me, then I like letting you learn the hard way. Some people need that. I did. I needed that when I was younger. I loved working in sales. And then the more I had to keep lying to customers just to cover my own ass, I was like, fuck sales. And I got out of it. Now, I'm not knocking you if you're in sales. Hopefully you're in sales and you don't have to lie to people. Hopefully you like what you do and hopefully you're doing a really good job at it. I'm not knocking it. I just don't want to do it. It's the same reason I don't hunt. I'm not a hunter. I don't like killing animals anymore. When I was younger, I used to do stupid shit like that. I, If there was a dead animal, I'd like to do, you know, I'm not going to get all too graphic in here, but I just, I was totally different when I was younger than I am now. But you learn from the things that you do. I don't like hunting anymore, right? But I don't knock hunting. I eat the shit out of meat. If you're a hunter, more power to you, dude. I'm not... And if you're a a member of PETA and you hate me for saying that, well, then you're going to have to hate me for saying that because I love chicken. I love beef. I love fish. I love it all. I just don't want to be the one to kill it. And maybe some people say, oh, what a pussy. Okay. (laughs) It doesn't faze me in the least. I'm still going to continue eating it and I'm still going to continue not killing it. I don't fucking care. But that's the that's the bottom line about all of this is if you love what you do and you don't give a fuck what other people say about it, then you can be unstoppable. I'm doing so much better at my craft now because I stopped trying to mold like, well, maybe I should maybe I should say things like this or maybe I should do things like this because, you know, that seems to be what the popular podcasts are doing or whatever. I used to think that right when I was getting ready to start and then, you know, after a couple episodes in, I was like, dude, just talk, just be you. This being me is why people told me that I should be in sales or I should be a lawyer or I should be a storyteller 
people like when I would tell stories and jokes at where I always try to like liven it up and make and like make not add like bullshit to it, but like I would move around and I'd move my hands and I would try to like I would try to make you feel like you're there because I feel like that's the best way to tell a story. That's how my family always, you know, I come from a family of talkers in case you couldn't tell. And uh, I just when I would see my dad or my uncles telling stories and they're just like getting into it and they're active and they're moving their hands around and they're trying to basically make you visualize being there. So you're part of it. People love that shit. They love feeling like they're there. You know, it's just like when somebody tells you a dream they had and you don't feel like you were there, you just think, okay, well, that's your dream, dude. I don't give a fuck. I don't care about your dream. But like if you can really involve somebody and make them feel like they were in it with you and they and that they were they're seeing the same things you were, people like that stuff. But the thing is is if you don't like what you're doing, no matter how much money you make, you're going to be miserable. And if you love what you're doing, then the money doesn't fucking matter because you're happy anyway. When you live a life of gratitude and thankfulness and appreciation, money doesn't matter to you. Like, look, I would love to sit here and tell you I'm a millionaire and I got all these nice things and doing the podcast has really helped my life and all that shit. None of that would be true. Like, I do the podcast purely because I feel like there's ways that I can help people and I have information that I think can help some people. Do I think I'm helping every single person that listens? Probably not. I mean, I'd love to. That's the end goal. The goal is to cover so many topics and hit so many things that I think can help people that hopefully it does. You know, that's my whole goal from starting from day one is to give information to other people that I feel might help them or make them happier in life. That's been mission, my number one mission from day one. If it was about making money, I would have given up a long fucking time ago because I'm still working a full-time job. That's how much money I'm making from the podcast. I still work a full-time fucking job. Now, I'd love to eventually get out of working that full-time job and do the podcast full-time, interview people, travel, do motivational talk. Not even just motivational, but happiness talks is what I would rather call them. I mean, as as silly or like, you know, childish, I guess, as that may sound. But the reality is I love making people happy. I love telling jokes and making people smile and laugh because I know that in that moment, you can't possibly be miserable while you're busting up laughing. You're not, not at least in that moment. Now, after the laugh, you may go back to thinking about something that is really hurting you or or destroying you. But my goal is to try to get you out of that too. And I think, I think that if you focus, like a lot of people are so depressed because they're so focused on other people, what they say about them. You know, like if somebody thinks you're a nerd or a dork or a loser or a fuck up, that shit hurts, especially when it's somebody close to you, like a really good friend or a parent or a spouse Or even your children. If your children say that you're a fucking loser, that's got to cut to the core. Luckily, my daughter can't talk yet. So we'll we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But until then, I don't give a fuck what she says about me. I don't want her to think I'm an asshole. I want to be a good dad for her. But, you know, at the end of the day, I know lots of kids who had good parents, but the kids are just dicks. Maybe it's the school system. Maybe it's the friends they chose to hang out with. Maybe it was bad parenting. All I know is everyone turns out differently. Everyone has different things that they're into. If you judge someone for what they're into, thinking that it's nerdy, just know that there's a hundred people out there that are saying the same shit about what you're into. If you say, hey, those kids sit around and play Dungeons and Dragons, what a bunch of fucking losers, but you're over there playing video games, just know that somebody out there is crushing it and they think everyone playing video games is a loser. It's, it's, none of it's true. It's just perspective. If you play chess every day of your life and 90 people a day call you a fucking loser, then just know that those 90 people are losers for spending time of their day watching what you're doing and then making negative comments about it. You're consuming, you're in their fucking mind. You're in their head. If they're focused on what you're doing, listen, uh, one of the best lines I've ever heard, and I fucking love this shit, and I think everybody needs this in their life. It's this. Losers focus on winners. Winners focus on winning. You understand? Let me say that one more time. Losers focus on winners. Winners focus on winning. When you're, fo- when you're focused on accomplishing the task or getting shit done or doing what you think is right or what you think is, is going to lead to your happiness and success, 
Only the other fucking losers are going to be thinking about what you're doing. Good or bad, regardless what they say. So do you and focus on you. Focus on what it's going to take to get the job done. Do not give up just because somebody says you suck, because somebody says you're ugly, because somebody says that you're stupid, because somebody says you'll never succeed, that you're not good enough, you'll never, you never have what it takes. That is spoken by true fucking losers because I'm promising you something right now. The winners are never saying shit like that to people. We're out here encouraging other fucking eventual winners. You may not be winning yet. Everyone starts at zero. Think of all the Twitter accounts or all the Instagram accounts or all the YouTube accounts that have millions of followers. They all started at fucking zero. You have to understand that. That is legitimate true. No one has ever opened a Twitter account and had 100,000 followers waiting for them. Nobody on YouTube has ever started a YouTube channel and instantly started with a million followers. They may have earned it quickly, but it didn't. Nobody started at that. So just remember that shit. LeBron James, his very first shot at a basketball, I'm sure he fucking missed. His very first attempt at shooting a basketball, I'm sure he missed. Steph Curry can literally, if you know basketball at all, you know Steph Curry can drain a fucking three-point shot from damn near anywhere on earth. He started out missing a lot. It's the reality, people. It really is. And it doesn't matter if somebody came along and seen Steph Curry in his first week of playing basketball and said, damn, that kid sucks. Look how stupid they would look now. Same with LeBron. Same with Tiger Woods. Same with any famous actor. They all started out at zero and you will too or you have maybe you haven't even started yet but I highly encourage you this when somebody talks shit when somebody focuses on you and says you suck just know that you have some fans watching just know that your shit has gotten is not going unnoticed it doesn't matter if they say you're good or bad opinions from others don't mean a fucking thing when it comes to your overall trajectory on where you're going because I, I know this much. Pick the biggest, like, maybe you know who Logan Paul is or Jake Paul, right? Some people think they're douchebags. Some people love them. Some people hate them. Some people think they're smart. Some people think that they're idiots. None of it matters, does it? They're out there doing their thing, and they're, they're making a killing. Same thing happened with Ninja and PewDiePie on on Twitch and and the video game streaming services that they do. Twitch and now Mixer for one of them, right? These, dude, there's people out there right now that think these guys suck and that think they're stupid, think that they're wasting their life, think that they're losers. They can think all the shit they want. Doesn't determine your overall success. These guys got millions of followers. They're out there killing it. They're making money. They're doing what they love. You're gonna have haters. Listen, the higher up you go, the more haters you're gonna get because not everyone's gonna like what you're doing. So you have to ignore it because none of the criticism means anything towards what you're capable of. So keep that shit with you. Understand that. It's extraordinarily important for you going forward. Appreciate where you're at. Appreciate your humble beginnings. And go out there and fucking crush it. And do not give up. If, if you've been working at it for a year or two years or five years and shit is just slowly, slowly, slowly building or not much at all, that doesn't mean to give up. It means maybe rethink your strategy. Maybe come at it from a different angle. Maybe take a couple of days off and then look back and say, maybe if I would have did this differently or maybe I should do this differently. Don't quit. Just change your strategy. The dream doesn't need to die. Just maybe the, the approach. You know, maybe change that up. Never change the goal. Change the strategy. That's... That's the best I got for you guys. I mean, when it comes to that shit, dude, I mean that wholeheartedly. That's, I, you know how many people have given me support when I started my podcast? Pretty much zero. People, like, nobody that has known me. Listen, when you start a podcast at 34 years old, the people that have known you for the first 34 years never look at you as a podcaster. They don't. They look at you as whatever the fuck it is that you're doing. I've worked at a plastics company for 15 years. All the people that I work with, probably look at me as a pot as a fucking plastics worker and i get it dude i'm not mad at them for it i mean they, that's what they've seen that's what they know i get it don't be mad at the people for having views about you 
their views are never going to see what your what your vision is and they don't know where you're going you might and listen maybe if you i think this i think that if your intentions are pure if your intentions are good and you work hard enough you're going to have what you want as long as your intentions are pure as long as where you're what you're like if you're just trying to make a quick buck if you're trying to manipulate people to become followers of yours just so you can take money from them or or take time from them or or your your shit's just not genuine they're going to eventually drop off and leave so you may make a quick buck but you're not going to make a long term thing you're not going to have a long term success with any of these fields any field that you want to be a part of unless you love it if you would do it, if, if, if something that you want to do, if you would do it for free, like if you go home every day after work and you do a certain thing because you just love it and you're not getting paid to do it, but you just do it because you like it. Like maybe you make arts and crafts. Maybe you're making like furniture around for your house. Maybe you're making little like artsy things to try to sell it at, at thrift shops or at fucking flea markets or something, right? Maybe you're a baseball card collector. Maybe you collect action figures and toys and, and shoes or whatever. If you genuinely love it, and you're going to do it for free, if you're going to spend your own time doing something for free, then why not at least attempt to make money off of it? And when everyone is telling you that you're not good at it and it's never going to happen and you need to just give up, look at them and go, man, I can't wait to... You don't have to say anything to them. Just, you know, go, okay, and then move on. But in your head, the very first thing you should be thinking is, I cannot fucking wait to prove them wrong. That's what I say all the time. You know, even if, um, you know, even if my parents thought I wasn't capable or my wife thought I wasn't capable or my kid thought I wasn't capable or my best friends thought I wasn't capable, I don't give a fuck what anybody thinks about my capabilities. (laughs) You know, if you want it bad enough and you work hard enough at it, who the fuck is going to stop you? That's it. That's, that's real. That's reality. Opinions can't stop you. Only you can. Keep that with you guys. I love you so much and I thank you for listening. I'm going to end it there and I hope, man, I really fucking hope that this sunk in with somebody. I really hope that this helps. I hope it like changes your life in a positive way. And I would love to talk to you about this, good or bad, even if, whether you agree or disagree, even if you hate my guts and think I'm a fucking loser, please talk to me about it. I, I'm, I don't like, listen, I'm the last person that's going to get shy about talking to people who think I suck. Okay. So if you think I suck, please, anything. Good, bad, I love it. I I encourage conversation is all I'm saying. I encourage all of it. I really want to talk to you. I really have a one-on-one with you. Be personal and tell you, I mean, maybe you think that I'm just jaded and I have no idea what I'm talking about. Maybe you think that because of your upbringing or your perspective or your angle is I, I can't possibly understand. Please talk to me about it. I'd love to tell you why I think that you ha- you have, nothing can stop you. You just have to know where you come from. You have to be self-aware of what you are, how good you are, what you're capable of, what your passion is, what your work ethic is like. I just want to have that conversation. So please, if you want to leave me a voicemail, you can do that through the Anchor app. Uh, if you want to just DM me or whatever, private message me, you can do that through Instagram on uh, look at Really Rich Podcast or on Twitter, it's Really Rich Adam. Um, on Snapchat and YouTube, it's Really Rich. And then on LinkedIn, please find me on LinkedIn, man. I just hit 5,000 connections. It's so It's been so fucking amazing. It's been a whirlwind, basically. I just started a few months ago, so it's amazing that I'm connecting with so many people. DMing, that's a great place to go because you can have private, personal conversations with each person. You can go on their posts. You can connect with them. It's amazing. So please, if you want, find me on there. Um, the name's Adam Rich. You'll see it as founder and host of Really Rich Podcast. Please find me. I'd love to have a talk with you guys. Uh, and that's... That's about it for today, guys. I love you, and I hope this helps. And uh, we'll talk soon, all right? Peace. I'm out of here.